What's up, freaks? It's Steve Eckert, and this is episode number 74 of Steve Says, the return of Steve Says. Some people will hate, but most can relate. We are bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. This week, we're going to be talking about, in the, in the words of the wise, young, eight-year-old Tyson, how to not be a softy. Basically, what do you stand for? Who do you stand for? And why do you operate the way you do? And then how to turn all that just from concept and visualization into a reality. So Steve Says is a live show on how to have a no excuses, badass mindset, guiding you to adapt and overcome and destroy obstacles that are preventing your success in your health, your family, your finances, so you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together and live life on your own fucking terms. Steve Says focuses on MBB. Mind, body, and business. Basically, how to operate with discipline, energy, confidence, action, and be the freak that you are. Be your freak self. We also focus on the five F-bombs. Family, fitness, finances, faith, and fun. We're going to get into it in just a second. It's also about adapting and overcoming, getting your shit together, and trusting the process. And of course, making no excuses. I'm just going to make sure we're connected here. I have you on the second screen. If you have any questions, comments, you can put them down below, making sure we're all set with a sound check, and we're going to get rolling. We are good. We are up. No. So today, what are we talking about today? We're talking about how to not be a softy. So yesterday, I was sitting there with Tyson. We finished a workout. After workout, we like to sit around and just talk. And again, if you have any questions, comments, put them on the screen. I'm looking at you down here below on the second screen. So we had a, I asked Tyson, Tyson, you're, gonna, you're, a, you're a young boy, you're going to be a man. What does it mean to you to be a man? The first thing that came out of his mouth, and this was just, we just hit record and went. He said, not being a softy. Now this is coming from an eight-year-old saying that what it means to be a man is to not be a softy. To be brave, he said. To take charge, to be strong and intelligent. Then he went on to say to keep your family and friends safe. Because if you're a softy, you're going to crumble under the pressure and you won't adapt and overcome. And it's his job to protect, protect his family, protect his little sister, to be the protector, the defender. Also to not get in the red. And those of you that follow our emotional discipline know that means to just lose control emotionally is getting in the red. And then, of course, he finished off with saying what it means to be a man is to make no excuses. Now, this is coming from an eight year old. And I'd be willing to bet that a good amount of adults couldn't give a good, as good of a definition of being a man. And certainly, the majority are not living according to those standards that, that Tyson set. So, he said to, you know, to, today, so to not be a softy, you need to know what you stand for. You need to know who you do it for, who you're doing it for. Why do you do it? And how you're going to make all that happen. So, what do you stand for? I like to go into the five words, the five words. Basically, what are the five single words that describe you? But not just you. The five words that you want to leave an imprint on a room. When you leave the room, that's what you want people fucking talking about you are those five things. What are those five things that impact, that imprint, that stamp of your freakness that you leave on a room behind when you leave or any situation at work with your family at a meeting, even with a stranger in the freaking grocery store? What what do you want to be thought of you, to said of you? What are the five words for you? For me, ironically, it it spells out, the acronym spells out DECAF, which you would think it wouldn't say DECAF, it would say like wild, crazy, psychotic motherfucker or something like that, but it spells out DECAF, D-E-C-A-F. And for me, my five words, the impact I want to have, the stamp I want to leave in every situation, every day, is discipline, energy, confidence, action, and freak. Now, those sound like five generic words, right? So I don't want you just to make those five generic words about what what you are, about loyalty and whatever else, whatever other, I don't want to say bullshit, but just generic terms you're going to use. What do those actual words mean to you? Like discipline, discipline to me means structure, control, strategic planning, getting your shit together, trusting the process. And discipline really to me means to, to, to hold the line. To have the courage to hold the line when shit gets tough through adversity, when shit doesn't go your way, when the walls are crumbling all around you, discipline is really the same as courage to me because you have to hold the line and it requires courage to have that discipline to hold the line when shit's getting fucked up all around you. 
So those are my personal definitions of discipline. So don't just give five generic words. They need to mean something to you specifically to say who you are, what you stand for, and ultimately how to not be a fucking softy, as Tyson already told us. So the next one, that was D. The next one is E, energy. Energy to me means enthusiasm. And I have a, I have a term, bringing the energy into any situation to someone. Sometimes you have to wake them the fuck up and shake them the fuck up. And to me, that's energy. That's letting your energy be infectious to others and oozing out to help other people. And I wouldn't say so much energy means passion. I don't really like the word passion when it comes to energy because passion blinds you. Passion makes you like people are passionate about whatever, football, whatever it is. That's not necessarily your passion. They say you have to have passion. You have to have passion. Passion doesn't really cut it. It's a little more about purpose is what's going to cut it over the passion. And that's what we're getting into about why we're, why we do the things we do in a little bit. But first you need to know who the fuck are you? What do you stand for? So that was the D. That was the E. The next is C for me. That's confidence. Now again, your words are going to be different. You may have some similar words, but they're going to be different. But you also may have some of the same words, but they mean something different to you in the stamp you want to leave in your footsteps as you leave a room or you leave a situation or every encounter you have with another person. So the C, confidence. Confidence is, for me, ultimately, it means really the belief in myself that I have the ability to figure something out, to F-I-O, to figure it out. To me, that's confidence. Like you can go into any situation. If you believe in your head, you have the ability to figure it out, there's no reason not to be confident. Confident is also how you show up, how you operate, standing up tall with your head up, your chest out, your shoulders back and down, your chin tucked. Walking with a sense of purpose, not slouching, speaking loud and clear, not saying a bunch of uhs and ums and you knows and all that other bullshit that you just fill in because you have lack of confidence. So that's what confidence ultimately means to me. Just really just being proud of you, being proud of who you are and what the fuck you stand for. That's what confidence is to me. But also confidence means preparation because preparation leads to confidence. Just like it takes discipline to have the courage to hold the line. It takes, it takes, it takes confidence to be able to be who you are, to be happy with who you are, to just show up a certain way. That's what confidence is to me. The next is action. A, D, D E, C, A in the decaf. Action is the next one for me. It's so after I have the discipline, With energy, now that's a two foundation, which leads to confidence, which that confidence is going to lead to action. Well, the preparation, the part I left out, the preparation is what led to the confidence. So confidence to me is if you're prepared, you do the due diligence, you do the work, you do, you put in the effort, it's going to give you the confidence because you're prepared, which then lets you, allows you to take action. Now, not just, oh, go take massive action, take action, take action. It's just a generic fucking term that's thrown all around the damn internet. And all these little pictures and quotes and all this other stuff. Take action, take action, take action. But what does it really mean to you to take action? To me, to take action means to push someone, to pressure them, to make them uncomfortable, to push them to not just out of their comfort zone, because out of your comfort zone, you're probably going to fuck a lot of shit up. Maybe just push them to a new level of competence, not just uncomfortable. Of course, it might be a little uncomfortable at first. But push and pressure people to a new level of confidence, to a new level of their potential. That's what action means to me. Action also means to me simply just stop being a little bitch. Because sometimes you have lack of action because you are just being a little bitch. And we all have that. We all have been little bitches and sometimes on a regular basis. None of us are immune to being a little bitch at times. But you just need to take action. Make shit happen. That's what action means to me. See, these are very unique to me about what action means to me. So whatever you stand for, whatever your words are, you need to have a specific definition of what they mean to you. And finally, finishing off the D-E-C-A-F, the decaf, is the freak. To me, the freak is to be yourself, to live life on your own freaking terms, to not give a fuck what anyone thinks about you, to, to march to the beat of your own freaking drum and not give a damn what's going on around you. Be unique, be yourself. Have fun. If you need to, be polarizing. Be opposite of what everyone else does and thinks and how everyone else operates. You don't have to be like everyone else. Be your freak self. And so that's the stamp I like to leave on a room behind me. Decaf, discipline, energy, confidence, action, and freak. What are your five words? Then you have to take that stuff 
and think about what, what do you do those, just checking the other screen down here. What do you do? Who do you do that stuff for? And then why do you do it for? So for me, and this is all, all this stuff was in a specific order. The discipline and the energy was the foundation, which leads to the confidence to take action, which leads to being able to be your freak fucking self. So who is this stuff done for? It all starts, and these are probably going to be similar for a lot of you. It starts with the family, the team, the clients, the veterans, and then self is really at the end. You're doing this shit for other people. Your, Your purpose is not just all about yourself. Your purpose is about other people. That's why I said passion. Passion is about yourself. Purpose is about other people. That's why passion doesn't cut it. Oh, you have to do what you're passionate about. That's not necessarily true because you could just be wasting your time and lead you to nowhere and not to any success. So what, is, what are your five words? Who are you doing those five words for? And then why are you doing it? So for me, a quick little recap about why I operate the way I operate. Why those five words are the stamp I want to have? Well, really, because I never in the past, as a kid, had any of those those five words. Actually lacked every single one of them majorly, like zero, didn't fucking exist. When I was a, a kid, as a growing up, my best friend was a wall. Yes, a wall. Not someone named Wall, not Walt, a wall, a fucking wall. I would sit and play a nine-inning game of baseball, throwing the pitch, calling it a strike or a ball. If it bounced a certain way, if I caught it, it was an out. Literally nine innings on two sides as two teams would take sometimes hours of just throwing a tennis ball against a wall, talking to it, calling out the play-by-play out loud as I'm doing it for hours and do that almost every single day. So basically, I never, as you could tell, I never fit in anywhere as a kid. As one of the, the poorest kids in the class, I didn't have any of the cool toys, the, the robots, the bikes, whatever. I didn't fit in elementary school. didn't have the cable TV, the Transformers, G.I. Joes. I didn't fit in high school where I was one of the only ones who didn't do any drugs, believe it or not, and had zero friends. Never went to any football games, proms, none of that stuff. I certainly didn't fit in running wild in the streets after high school and definitely didn't fit in when I was locked up in jail after high school. Until I joined the Marine Corps, I finally fit in. And understood what support, culture, and camaraderie really was. Which is when we started Peak Physique, the training centers in New York. Basically, after working at at big commercial gyms for several years, I felt that something was missing there. There's just something missing in those places. There was a lack of community, a lack of culture, a lack of belonging there. And people who just felt like they didn't fit in anywhere else or couldn't get results anywhere else or... People who might have had great adversity in their life, might have been fucked up, might have been had screwed up childhood, whatever it is, and just need some real support, a team, a family, and some camaraderie. And that's exactly the type of environment that we've created at Peak Physique. And so what is the gym really all about? What is our gyms all about? Because that's what, where these, what I stand for, led to. Peak Physique is a weight loss boot camp and boxing gym for busy people who, that haven't gotten results or feel like they don't fit in anywhere else, or, or, or are sick of wasting their time trying to figure out shit on their own, while never putting themselves first. Where we guide them step by step in their training, nutrition, and mindset, welcoming them into our peak freak culture. Surrounding them with the support system of like-minded freaks to, to help keep you accountable so that you're prepared for the journey up ahead towards a future version of yourself that you always wanted to be with the ultimate dream body and mind and lifestyle that you've always wanted and that will last a lifetime. So you can see how lacking as a child about, okay, what does a man mean? What does it mean to be a man? Then what do I stand for? Who do I do it for? And how does that come full circle? I told you, it's mind, body, business. It's all interconnected. They're all interdependent on each other. So that's when I started realizing and really connecting that mind, body, business are, are totally interdependent on each other. So that's when I took, also kept those gyms going and went to the next level of started starting coaching business owners, started coaching entrepreneurs who were struggling with structure and motivation, where then we guide them to adapt and overcome and destroy the obstacles preventing their success in their business, their health, with their family, with their finances, so that they could have a badass mindset with energy, intensity, and focus to then start living life and dominating life on their own freaking terms. 
This is all connected all the way from the beginning about asking Tyson, what does it mean to be a man? Then a childhood lacking in all of those things that it takes to be a man as a little boy, lacking every, every trait that it would take to be a man. Then figuring out what that is, figuring out what you stand for, figuring out who you do it for, creating then a, a business, a career out of that. You need to connect all this stuff together. Mind, body, business, MBB, put it together. You need to determine what you stand for, who you do it for, and why you do it. And then finally, how do you do it? How do you do this? How do you put it all together? Well, you, first, there's, there's two words. One's a three-letter word. One's a four-letter word. It's simple. The first, the four-letter word is a word called W-O-R-K. And the third word, the second word is a three-letter word, A-S-K. You need to work, and sometimes you need to ask for some help, some assistance, some coaching, some mentoring, some guidance. But let's first start with, well, let's combine those two together. So I was at a gym work one time, just a few months ago, working out on my own. And this young kid, kind of out of shape, kind of heavy set, starts asking me some questions about how do I get lean, how do I get muscle, how could he look like me, and all this other stuff. And in about who, in about who I want to be, one of my goals is to meet a new person every day. And I've been slacking on that lately. This kid approached me in the gym and I said, you know what? He just helped me with one of my goals of meeting a person every day because I was being a little bitch. I told you, we're all little bitches at times. My inner bitch had not went and met a new person in several days, probably weeks. So this kid came up to me, approached me, and really solved one of my problems of meeting a new person every day. So I said, you know what? I'm going to help this kid. I'm going to coach him. I'm going to guide him completely free. I took his name, his phone number, his email, sent him friend requests on Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff right there in the gym. Followed up with him, sent him a long email about where, just based on our conversation about where he was, some changes he needed to make. I asked him a bunch of follow-up questions so I could help him even further and actually coach him and guide him in his mind and his body and his business. All I was going to do this for free just because I felt that he had something, there was a reason for me to do it. He came up to me and, and approached me, solved that problem for me. I was going to help him out. You know what the problem is? I never heard back from the kid ever again. I, spent, I sent him this long email, pages long, based on our conversation we had in the gym about different things he could do with his mindset, with his body, his actual training. I actually wrote him up routines and things he needed to change with his nutrition based on what he talk, we talked about. And even in his business, and never heard back from him. I sent a bunch of follow-up questions, so I get more information, and I never heard back from him. And that's just the way that, that I don't even know what to say about that. Like that's, that's like devastating to the human race, that, that that's unfortunately what most people are like out there. Either afraid to ask, afraid to jump, afraid to go to that next step, afraid to ask for help, afraid to go to the next level, and also sometimes, sadly, afraid they're afraid to ask, but they're also afraid of that second word, W-O-R-K. Now, the shit I sent him in that email wasn't easy shit. It's hard shit. It's fucking work. To get to where you want to be, to be who you want to be, to be the man Tyson's talking about, that shit takes fucking work. To have the mind you want takes work. The body you want takes work. The business you want takes work. MBB takes hard fucking work. And people seem to be allergic to that nowadays. People seem to not have the capacity because of, of, of working back to back hours all day or even a few hours in a row. They, they don't have the durability to last over time, but they just want the outcome, but don't want to put in the fucking work. Don't want to build up those muscles, those mental muscles, those physical muscles, entrepreneurial business muscles to get to where they want to be. Because in order to do that, it takes a lot of asking and a lot of fucking working. And both of those people don't want to do. They're too pride to ask for, for help. Or if they do, they're afraid that the answer is going to come in the form of fucking work. And so they don't do either one of them. Which leads them to not have the capacity to get to where they want to be. Doesn't have, they don't have the durability. Because guess what? You're here. That next level you want to get to up here is going to require a lot more skills. Learning a lot of new things. Getting better at some weaknesses. Improving on your strengths to get from where you are to here. You're going to have to learn new skills. And guess what all that's going to do? It's going to, how are you going to get there? By fucking asking for helping and coaching and mentoring and guidance. And guess what that help and coach and mentor and guidance is going to do? They're going to prescribe you with step by step to get there in the form of fucking work. So don't be afraid of freaking work because that's what it takes. So 
taking action is the next thing. Taking action. When it comes time to actually put get to work, you need to take that work dead fucking serious. Like your life depends on it because it does. You need to stop, you know, recognizing only what was fucked up in your childhood, that your friend was a, a, a side of a house, a wall, and stop using that as an excuse as a freaking 30, 40, 50 year old. Like, get over that shit. Grow the fuck up. Put your big boy pants on and get to fucking work. Get dead serious. Get laser beam focused on your work about what you're doing. Stop bitching and moaning about poor little you. Mommy and daddy didn't hug me. Listen, I never had one single conversation with my father as a kid. Not one conversation. Never sat on the floor and played not one single time. Never threw a ball not one single time to my father. Ever. And I could sit here and bitch and moan about that and be a little bitch and, and let that hold me back or you can get over that shit. You can, only, you can only pull that card for so long about poor little me as a kid. You need to grow the hell up. Instead, focus on what's everything that's going right, everything you've done right, everything you're doing right. Focus on right fucking now is what you need to focus on. And then... Make most of what's left in your life. So we said wrong, right, left. Don't focus on the wrong. Just focus on the right. Focus on the right now and make the most of what's left in your freaking life. In this year, before the year's over. In this week. In this fucking minute. Focus on what's left in this minute and make shit happen. Quit bitching and complaining. You still have plenty of fucking fight left in you. I don't care where you are, what you're doing. If you, if you focus on right now and get to fucking work and ask maybe for some help, for some coaching, for some mentoring, for some guidance. Because guess what? The time is now. The time is right fucking now. Today, this second, this minute that we're sitting here talking. The, the, the present. Stop, stop playing fucking games and get dead fucking serious and laser beam focused. It's time to step up. It's time to grow up. It's time to put on, put on those big boy pants Go pro and make shit happen. All this other bullshit and excuses are not cutting it. They're going to get you nowhere. Stop being influenced by your fucked up past. Stop stressing over the unknowns of of the future and the uncertainty. That that hasn't even happened yet. That's just all fucked up and twisted in your head about what if this, what if that. What if we'll fucking kill you? What ifs will kill you in the world? It's time to step up your damn game. Take control of the game. Take control of your freaking life. You can get a, a shitload more done than the current level that you're just cruising at if you ask for a little help and put in some fucking work and be a little more durable and have a little higher capacity for doing shit and not being a fucking softy, not being a little bitch, aka don't be a little bitch. Because you need to operate as if your life depends on it. Because guess what? It does. You need to bring the fucking fire every second of every second. That's exactly how I live. Bring the fucking fire every second or every second. Be freaking awesome. Get your shit together. Stop being a little bitch. Don't give a fuck what anyone thinks about you. Wake people the fuck up. Shake people the fuck up. Make shit happen. Trust the process. Get dead serious right now. Don't make any excuses. Don't be a fucking softy. Ask for help. Work hard. Be a little more durable. Figure out what you stand for. Figure out why you do it. Figure out who you do it for. And then you will be fucking awesome and you won't be a freaking softy. When someone asks, what does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be you? What do you want someone to say when someone asks, what does it mean to be you? Don't be a softy. You are fucking awesome. No excuses.